my name is Trish Barra. I'm a member of the core team and a parishioner here at St. Margaret's. I was asked to come and speak to you about being pro-life during our current situation. Um, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for the past 22 years. So being around all of this as far as the health risk and that kind of thing is very near and dear to my heart. I've been working a lot of years, have lots of patients that are very contagious. So now I know this is serious and it's getting real and now is the time. I have been asked to represent Respect Life Ministry for St. Margaret's and they asked me to speak to you all on how to be compassionate without fear. We all have a lot of fear right now with this coronavirus. So, um, and it's understandable, right? But it's also important that we're still social, but at a distance, of course, but let's be social at a distance, not isolate ourselves. So how do we dig deeper and figure out what pro-life means to us now? In a pandemic, when we're quarantined at home, we can't march for anything. We can't go out and, um, you know, protest in a um, loving way and do things like that, help the way that we are used to helping. So what can we do to know that we're doing the best thing to support life, to respect it and um, show others love? Now's a, a really good time to socialize with everybody you can think of your friends, your family, your loved ones, mostly those you haven't talked to in a long time. It's um, so, but before you do that, it's really important that you're compassionate to yourself also. So, because we don't want to pass on any negative thoughts or any fear, you know, we want to pass on uh, positivity, encouragement, and we want to listen to people. So um, I have some tips that I practice that I thought you might like to hear that might help you with being more compassionate with yourself. So first of all, don't feed your fear. Don't watch the news constantly all day. It's, um, I find that if I watch the news too much, I get all um, upset and nervous and that doesn't help, right? We wanna be relaxed and have peace and trust in the Lord. So um, that's the first tip I would say is don't watch the news all day. Watch it um, maybe once a day, just so you know what's going on. Um, also play the mu music in your home. Put on some religious music. That's really nice to listen to right now. Anything that calms your soul and helps you feel good. Um, you also, of course, everybody I'm sure is doing this one. Pray, pray a lot. Also, you can um, watch the YouTube recordings like this one and all the masses. That really helps you feel calm and peace and feel connected to God and to the community of St. Margaret's. Do your prayers, but take a minute and just close your eyes. Take a deep breath and just relax. Well, first of all, so quarantine comes from a Latin word meaning 40 and we're in Lent. So 40 Lent, I think everybody kind of knows where I'm going. So um, now's the time. So Lenten season, this is a time for us for self-denial. And what are the three things that we always say we're going to work on? Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. How can we do that while we're quarantined in our homes? What, are, what can we really focus on? Prayer should be easy. So all the bazillion lengths that I've told myself I was going to do these amazing things. And then life happens, practices, meetings, working late. So you don't do those things and you let yourself down. We always set the bar really high. We're going to do amazing that first day and then we fail. So now all those extra things have been removed. So there's no reason why we can't pray and have that relationship like we never could before. This should be the Lent that is the best Lent we've ever had because we're stuck at home with the people that we love and we are forced to pray like we should have been doing all along, at least for me. I'll let y'all take it how it is for you. Another thing that I can suggest is gardening. Work in the soil. My daughter was in a really critical accident about 10 years ago and she had brain damage. And she got, as she was healing, she had a time in her her healing process where she didn't feel reality. And she told us, I want to go work in a garden. 
So she went and worked in the garden with my mom. And she told me that's when she felt connected again. I think putting her hands in the soil and feeling the reality of earth and feeling connection with God made her feel stronger and reality helped. So working in the garden really does help. So go do that. And I'm sure everybody has a lot of garden work to do right now. Then there's fasting. So fasting during a quarantine, well, I have a lot of snacks at my house, so maybe you feel the same way. But I think fasting for us now could be, we really need that loaf of bread because we're out and we want to make a sandwich. Okay, so is that loaf of bread worth risking someone's life? Is this God calling us to fast, not from Reese peanut butter eggs, but from fasting from going to the grocery store to get things we really don't really need? Maybe we could eat our sandwiches with just meat and cheese. If that means that that might be a thousand people that we could prevent spreading this virus to. We have to be a vessel. So this virus that's spreading this way, um, we have to be the ones that take it to whoever may catch it. And it's not really about us. We may not be necessarily at risk, but many of those are around us. It's the 74 year old man that just finished chemotherapy that has four grandkids. It's the, our best friend that has that autoimmune disease that looks fine on the outside, but really wouldn't be able to fight this virus. It's those people that are at high risk that we want to respect their life. And we want to maintain that and being pro-life right now. That's our biggest thing is that we are staying home out of love and out of respect for life. So after you have yourself feeling better and you're ready to pay it forward to other people, how you can be compassionate without fear to others is, um, first of all, connect. Connect with everybody you can. And there's so many ways we can connect. But it's most important that when you do connect, that you listen and you encourage and you give positive reinforcements. So I know a lot of us say we don't have time to connect. We're always busy. But um, now we have a lot more time. So take the time. Reach out to um, your parents, the elderly, first of all, your parents, the people that you know are ill or um, alone, someone that's alone. Who wants to be alone right now? A lot of us have people to keep us company, but some of us don't. So reach out to others who need um, a listening ear or just to know that somebody's thinking about them and that we care. Um, and then almsgiving. So I think right now, more than ever, this is a good time that we're able to give. Whether it be driving by the pharmacy, picking up medication for our elderly neighbor who doesn't need to be out at all, dropping it off at their doorstep. You can also offer to help those people. You can offer uh, to go pick up groceries for them and just drop it off at their door. You don't need to have any contact with them, physical contact. You've seen on social media people making masks for the hospitals because they have fabric in a sewing machine at home and they're stuck at home anyway. Um, and then, of course, continuing to give. To give here to St. Margaret's, the place that we love. We all miss each other. This is our home. We have such wonderful ministries here. We need to keep that going. God's been wonderful to us. However, he says we do have to pay our light bill. <laughs> That's in the contract. So if you could just keep, you know, keep doing that and keep giving so our church can continue to help those in our parish that are less fortunate than us. Make a list of all the people that you would love to connect with. Even if you tackle one or two a day, wouldn't that be a great thing to do? And what about the people that um, you have strained relationships, you had hurt feelings? What a perfect time, mostly at Lent, right? To mend your friendships, to mend your hurts, uh, put down your pride, and forgive. So we just had the Feast of the Annunciation. So we know the angel comes to Mary and we just celebrated. Um, and he says, you know, you're going to bear the son of God. And I'm sure she was like, who are you talking to? Are you talking to me? You know, I'm sure she was like, okay, wait, hold up. Um, but right now, this is our chance. So she trusted and she followed God's will and she had nothing but faith. And she bore the author of life for us. You know, so now to be pro-life means to stay home, stay home, avoid others, follow all the rules and regulations that have been put on us with this stay home. 
um, order. The social distancing, the six feet, part of that is due to the droplet thing. We can do that when we're walking outside to go walk our dogs and just make sure that we're a good distance from everybody around us. We can wash our hands all the time, um, before and after we eat at home, any, it, all the time, good hand washing. While you're washing your hands, people say, say the happy birthday song twice. Say to our fathers, it's a two for one. You're praying and hand washing. Y'all, it's a two for one. We need to do all these things and do them well and be faithful at it and tell ourselves, I'm not going to go out unless I absolutely have to because everybody else's life is important to me and I'm going to respect that. You can also use webinars with um, the business that I'm in, of health coaching. We have webinars all the time, so I can recommend um an app that you can use for that. It's called zoom.us, Z-O-O-M.us. So download that app and somebody has to be a host. So you have to join it first and become a member of zoom.us. And then you can give out that phone number to whoever you want to join with you. And they can all dial that number and join. It's called join a meeting. And you come in and you can see everybody's face, you can talk, you can see, uh, see each other. And you know what that's really good for? You know all these groups that we're not able to get together with right now? What about sewing groups, book clubs, prayer groups? Get together and do a rosary together with a group. Now's the time to focus on what really is important. Um, we This is our opportunity to love. So just like if a, just like if a woman is in a crisis pregnancy and she chooses life, that's choosing love. So right now for us, when we're stuck at home and we're quarantined, to embrace this as quality time with our family, to get in a prayerful relationship with Christ, and to stay home to protect others, that's us choosing love. I also want you to know that Respect Life Ministry is here for everybody, anybody. You're not alone. We're all in, in this together. We all love each other and want to support each other. So if you need anything, call St. Margaret's Church, leave a message, and we'll call you back as soon as we can, and we'll do anything we can to help. So when in doubt, always, this is one of the biggest opportunities we'll probably most of us have in our lives to show love. Um, take that route and always, always choose love. Air hugs to everyone. I miss everybody. See y'all at Mass. You might want to cut off C at mass. <laughs> I, I know I started to say later, and then I was like, "Oh, well, that's depressing." I'm not gonna. Say, he can. He can take that. Out. <laughs>